Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Canadian Whiteboard Finance. My name is Galen Nuttall, and this is a place where I take complex financial concepts and I make them simple. I whiteboard them out to help Canadians make better informed decisions about what to do with their money. So today, I'm going to focus on the tax-free savings account. I'm going to answer a lot of the questions I've been getting about it over the years as a financial planner and answering those questions for you. So if that sounds good, uh, let's get to it. So I'm going to open up my whiteboard here. Perfect. So this, uh, this is for you if you are in the position where I was when I became, uh, when I first um, started thinking about saving money and putting it somewhere, I was really confused. There were a lot of acronyms flowing around like the TFSA or the RSP. I didn't understand how they worked. Didn't understand which one was right for me. So if you're in that position, definitely stay tuned. Um, or if you have one, but you wanna make sure you're making the most of it, um, that's another reason to stick around and see what I gotta say. So uh, to explain the tax-free savings account, first I'll talk about a little bit about the history of it. So. The first thing I'll say about the tax-free savings account is it was started in 2009. So um, the way it works is that anyone who was uh, 18 and a Canadian resident uh, could contribute to a tax-free savings account. And that's um, their criteria. You have to be um, resident and you have to be a Canadian, uh, either citizen or resident, and in Canada. So anyone who was and 18 years old. So anyone who fit this criteria at that time, uh, this is when it started for them now. Again, if someone turned 18 in 2015, that's when it would have started from them, and so on. So it started at 5,000, so you can see here in 2009, it started with $5,000 of room, and then each year it went up, you know, it jumped up a bit to 5,500, and then for one year it jumped up to 10,000, and then it went back down a bit. So uh, it's interesting because in the early days of the tax-free savings account, there wasn't as much, nearly as much room, obviously. But now, uh, if someone was 18 when it started, or at least 18, now they have the ability to put in at least uh, put in $69,500 if they're just starting today. So that is the maximum amount that someone would be able to put into it if they're 18 when it started. So the second thing I'll talk about with the tax-free savings account is a big question I get is how can I, what do I do with it? Um, how do I invest in it? So I'll talk about that a little bit. So one of the common misconceptions about the tax-free savings account is people think it has to be used as a savings account, as a low interest or, well, whatever you want to call it, higher low interest savings account, because it has the word, you know, if you look at the acronym, it's TFSA, uh, savings. Um, it doesn't have to be a high interest savings account. You can invest any number of things inside of it. So just think of it as a, it's an account, it's, it's, it's a bucket. You can put the money that you have into it into all different types of investments. So you can pick something that is uh, low risk, you know, like, um, you know, savings account, or it can go all the way up to, you know, anywhere from low to high or anywhere in between. You don't have to do it as a savings account. So, uh, and the whole idea behind it is that you invest money in there, it grows over time, and then you have more when you take it out than when you started. That is the, the end goal of it, and to usually to help supplement. Um, sometimes people use it for short term, sometimes people use it for long term. Uh, it just depends on the person. Now, the next thing I get asked is, um, what does tax-free mean? So the first part of the word letters, TF of the SA, is tax-free. So what exactly does that mean? That's what people ask. So. The way that that works is, let's say there's someone who um, is just starting out with their tax-free savings account or someone who was 18 when it started. So we'll just use it to make it a simple example. So they had the room of 5,000 and let's say they put the money into the 5,000, they, they invested it and they let it sit for a while and it grew by 1,000, not to scale, <laughs> to six. Now this person could have gone and taken that whole 6,000 back out and wouldn't have to pay any taxes on it. So this is different than an RSP. Uh, this is different than a non-registered account um, in that the tax-free savings account, so you don't have to pay any taxes on the growth. So what is tax-free? What are the things, the parts of it that are tax-free? It is the growth, so you're not paying any taxes on that money that grew. Um, you're not paying any taxes when you go to withdraw the money. and um, and if, if at the end of the day, uh, God willing, you live a nice long life, at the end of it, you still have money left inside of your tax-free savings account, uh, it passes um, to your um, beneficiaries tax-free, um, where they don't have to pay any estate tax, you don't have to pay any estate taxes on it. So you're aware the tax-free savings account is just one piece of the puzzle. There's lots of other different financial instruments that people should be aware of. So be sure to click the link in my bio to check out my free download, The 30-Minute Guide to Canadian Finance. You can see all the steps I take my clients through step-by-step step, to build their own, to build your own financial plan. So be sure to check that out. And now on to the next big things about the tax-free savings account.
So another question I get is, what if I don't use my room? What happens to my tax-free savings account? So let's imagine that um, you were 18 when the tax-free savings account started. Uh, you had a room of $5,000, but you decided not to use it. That room will, ca will carry over to the following year, and the new room will get tacked on top of it, and so on and so on. And you do not lose it if you do not use it. Uh, of course, you lose the benefit of having tax-free growth. Uh, but you, you, you could wait, you know, even if someone had been, was 18 back in 2009 and started today, they could put in the full 69500 if they wanted to. Um, one thing to say about the withdrawals is you shouldn't take it out. If someone has the maximum, they shouldn't take it out and put it back in multiple times in the same year. Uh, that's not, that uh, starts to cause problems. The next question I get is, should everyone have a tax-free savings account? So people say, what about me? Is there things that would lend you to say that I should have one or I shouldn't have one? So uh, what I'll say is I don't know your specific situation. This video is for informational purposes, so be sure to consult the financial professionals in your life. Uh, should everyone have a, a tax-free savings account? The answer is no, and that N is really nasty, so I'm going to fix it. Uh, yeah, it might be kind of shocking because a lot of people just think everyone should have one. Um, that is a good example of what I call double-double advice. Not going to go into that, but if you download my guide, you'll learn what double-double advice is. No, not everyone should have one. And I'll talk about the top three things that, um, cases that I see where people should not have one. In general, obviously consult your financial professionals, but if you're an American citizen, uh, the tax-free savings component of the TFSA gets nullified. So it doesn't make sense to have one, really. Uh, the other time is a business owner that has an incorporation. Um, to take extra money, if someone in a business owner is already taking out a high salary and then takes out extra to just for the purposes of putting it into the tax-free savings account, usually doesn't make sense. And incorporated doctors, uh, same situation, to take extra money out just to put it inside of the tax-free savings account. But if you're the kind of person that, so this is the no, um, yes, th this is the, 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 the signals that would point to it does make sense. Yes would be if you're the kind of person who, um, of course, you have the extra money lying around, um, so you can actually take it and put it towards the tax-free savings account. That's obviously like the number one thing. Um, if you don't have a pension where you work, um, this is a great one of, you know, I have another video that compares the TFSA and the RSP. It can be a good place to save money. And um, if you, um, yeah, extra, if you have extra, extra money around, you don't have a pension, and you want to save up for something in particular, like it's, it can be a great place to save it, as long as you're not an American, a business owner that's taking money out just to put it into the tax-free savings account or a doctor in the same position. The next question I get is about the tax-free savings account is what happens to the room? So I'll just give you an example. If someone started, or, or someone had been 18 when it started and started today and they could put in the full amount um, and it grew, you know, they put in the 69000 and, and I, met, I met with someone the other day whose TFSA was worth 90000 because they've been using it since the beginning and getting some growth. Uh, this becomes the new room. The level to which it has reached is the new room. So even if this person, so this person over time kept putting money in and it kept growing, and now the total amount of money they have in there is $90,000, if they took it all out, they could turn around and, like I said, you shouldn't do it too much in the same year. So just be careful, but if they took it out this year and wanted to put it back in next year, they could put that full amount back in plus the new amount. Um, that's It's like a bubble, you know, like or like a balloon, like it's been expanded to that new stretchy size. That's its new size. It doesn't go back down. Um, you can take it out and put it back into that same amount, which is a nice benefit of having the tax-free savings account. So at this point, you've learned a lot about the ins and the outs of the tax-free savings account. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them. And in the meantime, to understand full financial planning, be sure to click on the link in my description and download your free 30-minute guide to financial planning for Canadians. And while you wait for my next video, here are two that I've already made somewhere around here. Uh, RSP explained and TFSA versus RSP. Be sure to check those out uh, to dive a little bit deeper into those all accounts as well. Thanks for joining me and see you in the next video.